Welcome, everyone. We have a best of five finals TVZ between two great names, one of which you might not be recognizing right now. That's because he's using a different account. But in the top left, we do have Team Liquid's Clem. And in the bottom right, this is Rainer, who is using the name Jack Frost on his ladder accounts when he streams. Yesterday, he was streaming 1v5 or 1v6 or something, Archon mode, which is how he trains when he's really taking things seriously. It's actually up on his YouTube as well, if you guys want to check it out, Rainer YouTube. It does occasionally get updated. Um, but he does not often play in the Open Cups, but he did play in both Europe and North America on Monday, just two days ago. And it seems like he was also playing, actually for realsies, Zerg. So not playing random and then coincidentally rolling Zerg. So this is supposed to be pretty good. I was able to see a little bit of it on the second screen, kind of just casually watching on Pig's channel. And it certainly seemed like some very high quality TVZ. Uh, Clem has been on a tear since his Atlanta victory. Spoiler alert. He did really well in WTL. And while he didn't actually win the European Open Cup this week, uh, one could maybe excuse it because he played like 20 plus games just 12 hours beforehand. And Max Pax does seem to kind of get the jump on him every now and again for some reason. It's kind of weird. But anyway, so they, they both these players played later that same night, but both these players playing in some real e-gamer hours, so it's really not uncommon at all for Clem to be here. A little more uncommon for Rainer, but seemed to like he was in good shape. Because, oh, that's what I was... I was watching a little bit of Rainer's point of view. Yeah, that's right. He was streaming it. So I highly suggest watching these guys if you can find their first person VODs because they are woof they are freaking fast oh gaming um now defunct for the people you would know who used to work at O-Gaming for Starcraft made comeback TV they released a video of Clem and it is it's freaking insane actually both these players the fastest players and also those that are literally like they were like born into StarCraft, okay? Like their muscles and their mind work differently because they started playing when they were seriously 12. Much like Maru, to be fair. Maru was the first one. He was the OG kid born and bred to play StarCraft 2. Flash is also pretty young when he played Brood War, but he's still not as much. So anyway, a little background is we have totally normal openers. We are... Accustomed to Clem mostly going for the three racks, or the three racks, Jesus, the three CC. Got distracted by the XD and wondered if I missed something. We didn't miss anything, so I don't know. I guess he's just smiling because this is a really intense micro. This is the type of micro that if someone was doing this to you on ladder, whether you're bronze or masters or GM, you would be scoffing. You'd be like, okay, bro, like how, how badly are you messing up back at home? But this is just Clem's baseline, so. <laughs> what he does. Tries to kill a drone that uh, ultimately isn't even really doing very much, but is still a drone that you want to save. Now, the third base was obviously taken a long time ago. Clem is going into that 3cc. Now, Rainer, he can do anything. I mean, I guess more macro than cheese, because uh, I, can, I can't really think of too many players who are like more than 50% cheese, right? Uh, there's definitely a few. I mean, Haas was the biggest name. And still is when he gets to appear in international tournaments. Um, who else? A guy named Arthur. A lot of Protoss players. <laughs> also, it was very... But most of the point, you know, it's macro. But Rainer can absolutely throw in a couple of cheeses. He can throw in some all-ins. He can play Ling Baneling. He can play Roaches. And he can play Mutas, which we might see if we get onto uh, Radisset Station. Don't know if it's actually in this map pool for this series. If I remember correctly, watching Rainer's stream, he told Clem... No one cares about the final map or something like that. Bit by bit, that's a good one too. Yeah, exactly. Just pull the boys every single time, for sure. We have 3cc for Clem, bread and butter. It's what he does. He has occasionally thrown in a forward two racks, which I really loved his uh, practice with that, but it did seem to be just practice. Hasn't really included it in his competitive play. And then uh, he did recently proxy racks, Serral, actually. So he, he can do different stuff, and I think you should be the absolute top tier player, but he also has continued to improve on just his macros so that when it felt like people kind of got the gist of his style and his pacing and his tempo and he started to falter a little bit more versus Zerg, he improved again and then went back to being a 3cc player whose pace and tempo was 
you know, pretty similar across the games, yet it is just so well done <laughs> that it doesn't seem to matter. He does do a little bit of a change up, you know, Hellions and Cyclones occasionally, sometimes too nowadays. Banshees versus a Liberator. Sure, 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 sure. But it's really, you know, a lot of times very similar. This is Banshees though, and I'm not sure that Rainer actually knows about this. No way that I can tell that he would know 100%. He knows the 3cc, but does not know what the follow-up is. So usually we see some cautionary sport crawlers. Yep, yep, and yep. So yeah, he uh, is preparing. I mean, this will help him against further drops and harassment, I suppose, anyway, even if it wasn't Banshees. But literally, this threw over like a queen or something. Like, how are you already injured? I guess it uh, flew into the queens and the queens back the way. That's probably what I missed while I was talking. Now, these Banshees, not just great harassers and uh, defensive overall units, but specifically pretty good against a Roach style of play. Roach is not particularly speedy and less massable, I should say, than, than Lings. So, you know, Banshees can do really well against them. Now, are we going into actual Roaches? Seemed like we were, but it also kind of seemed like we were planning on doing an attack. We as if I'm... I'm Rainer. Um, but then that just kind of got deterred completely and entirely by the presence of Banshees. So a little bit awkward. You know, if you weren't going to do anything with the seven roaches, defend or attack, then you wouldn't have made them. You would have made more drones. I got a text that I don't know how to read. I don't know what it is. Uh, anyway, but uh, we got Queen's spreading creep still. Not deterred by the Banshees on that aspect. Speed is on the way. 1-1 one, one for the Lings. And right now we're just looking to supplement with some Ravagers. So not really Roaches anymore. First push out, finally on the way. And 1-1 one, one Combat Shield's also on the way for Clem. Clem going to go into a second factory. He has built tanks, as we can see. This is a... Fairly popular Roach All-In map. I mean, certainly Dark was choosing this map to go for Roach All-Ins in Atlanta. And if you do see Roaches, you do have to respect the possibility of a Roach attack. So, theoretically, in this game, yeah, Clem could have skipped the tanks. Rainer's not going into a 1-1 Roach All-In and already moving over into Ling Bane, Ling Ravager Hive. But yeah, it's pretty dangerous to do that. So, two tanks, kind of the bare minimum as far as the safety goes. Third tank is actually out too. And then into the wood of mines and drilling claws. Double scans actually to confirm exactly what Rainer is doing. Clem does not want to take any chances. Because if he over defends, if he just says I'll defend, then that also has consequences. So does want to know if he can push and pull. And he absolutely can. At least certainly can, he's going to be able to have the drops out in the map. Where if you saw no hive, no infestation pit, then there's probably a gigantic roach army right in front of you and you haven't seen it yet. Not the case. So Clem can continue dropping and just leave some units at home. I don't know if he's actually going to do a main push, trying to a pre-hive attack. Seems actually that he'll try and do that a little bit, clearing up the creep on the pathway to this high ground around the fourth. Usually in this game it was, uh, yeah, it was the fourth actually. Yeah, I'm right. This was the third over the left. And the hive is going to be done very, very soon, and that will give Rainer the ability to make vipers, which are going to be helpful against those tanks. But what about the bio and the wood of mines? That is a different question. Not quite maxed out yet, but getting there. Rainer with a good army supply and excellent economy if he can hold on against this push. Baneling speed is done. 2-2 two, two around the same time for both players. Not the issue at this particular moment. It's about dislodging the Terran, trying to come in on the backside with a couple of Lings. It's a very nice move indeed. A lot of these tanks not firing in the right direction. What am I trying to pop off as effectively as possible? They will occasionally pop off, but uh, not as much as perhaps Clem was hoping for. He is going to have to skedaddle. Much of that fight was still on creep as well, so less effective than Clem was, like I said, hoping for, but not totally ineffective. He did have a trade, and Clem was able to escape with a good number of Marines, and his macro was, of course, fantastic back at home. He's actually just F2 the Hellions in here, and I guess why not? You haven't done anything else. You know what? I say F2. No. This man doesn't F2. He literally just saw he had Hellions and wants to use them. My bad. His control's pretty freaking good. And he's still dropping off to the right side, but Rainer's pretty on top of this. He's trying to chase down the left side attack anyway, but unfortunately the Banelings all got crushed there. And the Roach Ravager will eventually take care of it, but that was a little bit of a ring around the Rosie. 
And Clem's double drop on the right side still exists. It was the remnants of the attack, but it still can factor in as a drop. This has been a real tango as far as the left-right attacks and defenses go. And Rainer has been dancing at the same speed. He's been doing actually almost exactly as well as Clem. Because not only is he deflecting the damage away from his economy, he hasn't been touched at all, I believe. But he's also managing to creep, keep the creep. No, that's hard to say fast. Keep the creep up and running. And that's actually the really impressive part. Has lost track of the push a little bit. Might not be anticipating it on top of this fifth base, but does have army on the high ground with some creep to use. Would have mines a plenty. However, oh, looking to pop off. Some of them on the Overseer, a bit ineffective. Most of them already cleaned up. Viper's now in play two. Um, cheeky parasitic bomb. Those medivacs uh, could be weakened for sure. And the Banshees actually I think they get this pre-split. No, they literally split. I missed the parasitic bomb because I am blind. Unfortunately, I don't play this game. The attack on the right side seems to have been cleaned up totally and entirely. And again, just want to highlight how impressive it is that despite being under so much pressure on the right side, the main attack into the drop, into the drop, into the drop, into the drop. Three creep tumors still alive. Not to be for very much longer, though. Eventually, Rainer... His queen resources have been taxed, so he has lost seven in this game. I probably missed a point in which they were off creep and they're actually gunned down, but that is a problem now. Keeping up on the creep is going to be very difficult. Somehow these weren't cleaned up. I guess he didn't have a scan. Clem just going into the main base at this point while gathering his forces on the edge of creep in the middle of the map, which, hey, is actually a pretty good sign for the Zerg. And actually, Rainer agrees. He's going to take the opportunity to parasitic bomb a bunch of medivacs and actually try to be aggressive on a Clem side of the map. That creep spread, not just impressive on the right side, but down the middle of the map, where maybe it's not some, sometimes not a problem. You know, okay, it cleans up eventually. But in this game, it is very close to being a huge problem. It's almost on Clem's third base, giving that little bit of momentum boost to a potential attack. Now, it looks like Rainer is going to respect the reinforcements as well as have to deal with this drop, so he's not going to pull the trigger, especially without Kite his plating, but he is posturing, and Clem needs to be worried about a straight-up defense. He no longer is in control on the map. Damn, both these players are so extremely fast. Good lord. Clem has gotten a fourth base behind this as well as a fifth downturn to a planetary, and a sixth is also on the way. 3-3 three, three start up for both players. Clem at least managing to prioritize the plus three attacks so that will be finishing very, very soon. But Rainer really not that far behind on the upgrades either. Fusion core on the way for Librain. Shenta Towers of Plenty coming down. Even a couple of Vikings by the looks of things. Maybe deterring overlords from Nidus Worms or just actually helping versus the Vipers. And on an account of five, I would say, yeah, very much helping against the Vipers. Also, what could help against the Vipers? Ghosts, of course. And Ghosts are also on the way. Snipes, EMPs, you name it. Also going to be helpful against those Ultras. That is a very large Zerg force coming down here. Now, it's all going to be off of Creep. And a lot of these Vipers aren't getting to the best of their spellcasting abilities. One Parasitic Bomb, not particularly effective. And going down to the Vikings, too. Lots of room for the Bio to escape from. But is it going to be a good enough defense to save the third base? Rainer is remaxing as quickly as possible. Still has the remnants of his army looking for the connections, but not quite able to find them. Clem has fallen down in supply, but he is going to hold on to his third, loses nine SEVs. That's not problematic for someone on six command centers, but does need some time to replace the army. Obviously, the Zerg is going to remax faster, and even if it is only on Lings, these are cracklings. The Juno Glands is done. Plus three melee, not quite, but about 25 seconds away from finishing. Right now, Clem holding on, thanks to the micro, off of creep through the Sim City. That's what saved him right there. Rainer had he gotten a surround on the army at any point would have probably won the game right then and then and or a fungal which we do have an investor now on the way as Rainer also identified a bit of an annoyance right there Rainer still on 86 drones six seven bases trying to get set up here he's actually maybe arguably a little bit late to sixth and fifth uh, sixth and seventh I guess but he has plenty of bank in the minerals he will be able to double expand and he should be getting his gases up pretty soon too and he clearly has already remaxed plenty of banelings here and i am seeing a notable lack of splash where are the tanks where are the wood mines nowhere to be seen now it's just pure bio versus the banelings banelings are crashing into the bio what you would overall say maybe is inefficiently but doesn't matter if rainer is continuing forward with the momentum more banelings still available as well a couple of snipes did go down but that's going to be it for the Ghost. They got to see battle. They're picked up. They're retreating. Opening up the vulnerable planetary at this point with even with the mass repair is not going to be able to hold against the Ultra Roach Ravager. Clem entirely on the retreat has been pushed back. 
Rainer playing at a blazing fast speed, even faster perhaps than Clem in this game, was able to stop Clem from finding any momentum on his side of the map, and then actually chose a very opportune moment to strike before Clem had gotten to Liberators, before Clem had gotten to Ghosts, and while Clem was still very low on the splash, that was a huge problem for that last engagement, and this is going to be it. Rainer is going to win game one on hard lead with just some straight-up mechanical battles everywhere on the map. Excellent decision-making to attack in relentlessly on the third base. And Rainer comes in looking stronger than ever, actually. His Atlanta performance was a little lacking, but he was very sick at that time as well. But it looks like he's not only recovered, but he's also putting in a lot of work. That was super impressive. Game two is going to be on Solaris. In the bottom left, we do have Liquid Clem. In the top right, it is Basilisk's Rainer under the name Jack Frost. And Rainer just played a really powerful game. I mean, that was... That was a game in which the first 10 minutes, I would say, easily go Clem's way if he's facing a lot of other Zergs. Because his control and his macro and his pressure, I think, were all totally fine they were great <laughs> they, they were exactly what you would expect from clem but then he did lose track of the middle of the map you know i missed an opportunity maybe to clear up more creep on the right side and i was applauding that but that actually was increasingly less important because he tried to push it and didn't actually kill the base so you kind of you know we're seeing him move away from that right side anyway so the focus went on the left side and he was trying to clear up a lot of creep directly to the fourth base which was the third in that game um and there was, and that was okay too, but then the middle of the map ended up being a big problem, and, and a shorter map than a lot of the others too, hard lead. So, suddenly the creep is, is bordering on your third CC. It's not the end of the world if it's not actually on your third CC, because you still have your defender's advantage off of creep with still some distance of the map to cover for reinforcements, but... It does mean that all those reinforcements are just a little bit quicker, the more creep that they have to use. And that's the Zerg can feel a lot more confident about being out on the map. Because if they're halfway on the map without creep, we're always like, well, you know, be careful, like, how is this going to go? Ah. But if they're halfway on the map and there's creep, well, then we just are like, well, that's, that's what you do. So that means that they can choose to pressure, to pounce, and to straight up attack whenever they want. Whereas usually the expectation is that the Terran's done a good enough job pushing the creep back, that there's always that little bit of blindness that the Zerg has. So they got to be kind of respectful of where the possible attack is incoming. And if they are literally the ones in charge of the map, basically, they have the map control with both Zerg units and Zerg creep. The Terran is the one that feels claustrophobic. They're the ones that are wondering where the attack will come in from next. Uh, Natural's coming down for Clem. Very normal opener once again. As we have Rainer dealing with the Reaper micro. He's good it is. Third hatch is already down, though. And that's, I would say, the most important thing. But we do expect the professionals to be able to sneak that drone out at an appropriate time. You know what we don't expect? We don't expect Clem to lose that Reaper. Oh! Oh, okay, well, he's clearly tilted, and he's going to get killed 3-0. That's clearly what's going to happen. But seriously, we expect the Zerg player to defend appropriately while getting a third hatch up, but Clem is supposed to save that Reaper and come along later with the, the Hellions. Oh, well, not going to happen, and maybe that would open up an uh, opportunity for Reyna to think about doing a early game attack. It was deflected last game just by the presence of the Banshees, though, and a bit of a longer map, less Roach map, and definitely could go Banshees again. Yeah, I guess you wouldn't go for it. But I'm just saying, you wouldn't be scouted. Just saying. I think it might be Banshees again? There's no tech lab. Ha, huh, the Viking first. Legitimately happened so rarely, although I have seen it a couple times more in the last few months that I kind of forgot that was a thing. The Viking first, potentially into Banshees. Let's see if that is the case, and then I'll talk about how that can be helpful. 
Obviously going to be able to get at least one Overlord, if not two. The Overlords of Rainer very cautiously placed this game, though. It's going to be just in the Liberator, so a lot of harassment, a lot of opening up opportunities for later on as well. Viking Banshee being a very old build, very rarely brought out nowadays. Viking Liberator, a little more, but even then I would say more often than not, Clem does go just straight into Liberator, so definitely a change up. But the Viking gets the Overlord kills, it clears out the spaces for further drops and further harassment of any sort, including where the Hellions are going. And then uh, could potentially supply block Rainer at already an opportune moment. A liberator harassment, usually taken care of without a sweat, can be surprisingly tricky with Clem's micro. And that is also why Spore Crawlers can be very helpful. So, last game, Rainer went for Spore Crawlers, basically blind. I think he went for at least two Spore Crawlers blind, and the third one might have been a reaction to seeing the Banshee, because I missed when they actually met. But otherwise, we do have some blind Spore Crawlers, and the truth is that they do help against two things, straight up, Banshees and Liberators. And then, if they don't exist... If it's just Metavax, I mean, they still are kind of helpful. It's not the worst thing to have. And double queen control group working out well to not only spread creep, but also deflect what is eight Hellions. So a little bit more emphasis on the Hellion production, wanting to find a little bit more damage. So far, ineffective. That is that little bit of a delay on the barracks, a little bit of a delay on the reactor on the barracks, and a delay on the either would-be tank or Widowmine production. Now, this game so far, Clem has seen no potential roaches, but that doesn't mean that it's not happening, and he really can't get a confirmation on whether it is or isn't. But, generally, now that we're off of hard lead and Rainer already did it once, Clem might be thinking he can go ahead and, and safely go into Wooden Mines, and it seems to be the case, building a reactor on the factory at this point. Hellions finding some creep tumors is better than nothing, because that's so far what they have found. And then maybe into the drone line, not going to go for the gold. Lingsburg about to jump on top, so two drones will die. That is it. Uh, perhaps another Viking, actually. Two have already gone down. Third one is safe. Yeah, he's not even micro in the Viking. In the Queens. Oh my god, so many Queens. That is a very dead Viking. Very dead. Bailing us on the way for Rainer as that creep is now getting kind of concerning. <laughs> it's like, initially it was kind of, oh, woe is the Hellions, they can't get anything done. Stupid Zerg players, stupid queens. But now it's kind of like, oh, <laughs> that's already over the halfway point. I don't know. I don't know, man. Over the halfway point in the middle of the map, almost there on the right side. Not at all there on the left side, but still large enough creep thread to, to cover this base if it was under attack. But you know what? Creep can only get you so much vision, I suppose. In on the right side, the very right side, the marine drop happens. Does get a little bit of a surprise factor, but those queens are there to help out, and who knows what else following right behind it. Rainier was actually anticipating the drop going into the natural by the looks of things, but it safely retreats. Only two more drones going down, so a total of four. Very low damage game thus far. Hydralis Den coming out, Lickety Split for Rainer. That is not going to be scanned. That's just confirming that it is Ling Bane Ling, but that's, uh... I was gonna say is, is kind of obvious, but you know what? Still technically not. There, there's at least one ZVT I can think of where even at this point someone has gotten away with hiding roaches, but yeah, probably Ling Bane Ling. And it certainly is. But the Hydralist end being added on, and it does change the, the flow a little bit more. Obviously, if you're thinking that there is no worry dropping every which way because the queens are entirely on the right side of the map, it's going to change up when the Hydralist pop. Bailing speed would be nice to have, though, and that is not finished quite yet. That is the Overlord speed finishing. Bailing speed still about 30 seconds to go, causing some problems. Decent connections with the Hellbats at the very least, but a lot of Marines still left over. A couple of Banelings might not cut as much if there is a focus fire. No focus fire this time around. This clan maybe was a little distracted, also trying to take care of the Queens. Rain are trying to transfuse for their lives, but there's only so many transfuses on Queens after all, and those Marines will be able to decimate the Counts. One would have mind helping as well. And then splashing the friendly fire! Oh my god! I saw that in my brain for like half a second before it happened. I was like, wouldn't it suck if that's that hit exactly as the Venifex retreated? And that is exactly what freaking happened. Oh my god. Poor Clem. Alright, well you gotta you gotta, you know, just take it on the jaw, right? <laughs> Get back to punching. That is unfortunate. 
So now it is only a single double drop, which really should be no problem for Rainer to deal with. He still has a decent amount of creep spread too, although notably the left side is lacking in general vision. So you really can't tell if there's a bigger push even on the way down there. Yeah, I guess he kind of can now because he sees the push is coming through mostly the middle of the map. A little AI split, I believe, from Clem's a little awkward. But despite that, would mind backfiring? Clem is not going to give up on the aggression. But I don't think it's really real aggression. I don't think Clem thinks he's going to be able to find much more here other than clearing up the creep. But it's better than nothing because the creep was getting a little silly. Ling, Baneling with speed. Hydra's both almost on 2-2. Clem's upgrades a little bit late on that armor. Rainer seems to once again be in a fabulous position. And the sucky thing is, though, is that he did lose his queens, and while he has rebuilt them, he hasn't gotten them back on the opposite side of the map, which he might be fixing as I'm speaking, especially now as he's pushed Clem all the way back home. Clem is going to retreat with one force, but a second force up to the top left is going to try and tango. Does Rainer have enough to defend? The Rainer, the Bailey count's actually getting kind of scary. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say. The link count is getting kind of scary to cover the banelings, and I couldn't coordinate my thoughts fast enough, but that didn't end up mattering. Clem was forced to retreat as the army of Rainer also came back home to help, so Clem not finding any headway onto the fourth base, but has decided that this is the place to push. I think that makes a lot of sense considering where he is expanded, but also where the creep spread is lacking. So Clem's still going to try and make this work despite the lack of wood of mine. So the Bandlings rolled in just single file enough to be destroyed by the Marines. All the Bandlings gone, but the Ling Hydra still remains. That will be enough to ward away Clem at least temporarily while hopefully more Bandlings are being made. Now there's only six in the field and no more in production. Might be a little bit of a mistake, but Rainer seems to be okay with it. Starts up plus one missile as his upgrades are done. Same with Clems as Clem is now taking a fight off of Creep, able to set us up against the mass amount of Lings, deciding to eventually back away. Lurker Dan is the next phase for Rainer, and Clem should be very well aware of that. If you see Ijus, you should be wary of Lurkers. So we should have a Ghost Academy, and absolutely we do. Almost close to building those ghosts, and a miss rally on his production is a little bit awkward, but Clem is setting up into the four base ghost style of play, I think as fast as he would like. In the last game, that was actually kind of a timing problem. He didn't get to those ghosts, and he started to lack Splash, which is the combination of problems. To really be totally set up to defend, he was already under pressure on his third base by the time ghosts were appearing. In this case, while Rainer has had a couple of moments where it looks like he's striking out to Clem's side of the map, he has had to retreat. So Clem should be fine on that timing, although still no ghost increase. And yet 3-3 on the way for the Terran, as expected, will be done long before Rainer's. And Rainer is actually coming to that scary point for the Zerg, right? Where they don't really have that late game set up quite yet, whereas the Terran is maxed out, is adding on Ghost, and is inching ever closer to 3-3 with this powerful bio. And while Rainer did replace some of that creep from earlier, it still isn't as far out as you would hope, especially again on that left side, unaware of the incoming attack, only responding at the very last second. One cheeky blinding cloud is very, very effective, plus a nice parasitic bomb, and managing to make a defense out of a very low number of units, but can he make the defense on the other side of the map? The right side is being pushed once again. Clem sees an opportunity, not many banelings left over once again. Plenty of widow mines as well. Still armed that he could fall back to, and that base is looking very close to dead. This time around, is going to pick up that surround is going to be too good but it feels like this base is dead in a matter of time clem is going to be relentless in his aggression as he saved all of his bio on that retreat and the wood of mines are coming in reinforcement wise very quickly I actually decides to split that away interesting i thought he was going to really push the issue over here Decided to split away instead. vipers had joined up with this army and the parasitic bomb was eh, not that great kills one medivac but off of creep this far, especially without a lot of banelings and no surround possible. Oh yeah, Rainer's not going to get very much farther. How many queens are we at again? Four queens. So he once again lost queens at some point. Lurkers are going to be a godsend as far as having something very simple to defend a base with. But it's only simple for so long. Eventually, Rainer gets enough scans, gets enough ghosts, gets enough micro and attention to a, a, a situation exactly like this. That he will actually engage upon the lurkers. So... You know, four lurkers can hold against a 16 marine drop, no problem. But if someone's paying attention, someone's pushing, just lurkers does not do the trick. And that is a more and more concerning problem for the future. 
Rainer still trying to defend on the right side, and if he could find a moment in which he does get a surround or he does get them bailing connections, then that would be a lot less to worry about. But of course, this far off of creep, Clem is not giving him that opportunity. He's gonna clear up the Widow Minefield, I think, is his priority here. And a lot of women are going down, but then that's such a that's a very precarious position, man. Ghosts are ready to slap the Vipers as well off of Creep again. Only so many reinforcements coming through here. He's not going to get this around. And more Wood of Mines. More and more. Oh my god, the friendly fire, though. Jesus. All right, just kidding. The Wood of Mines were actually Rainers all the time. And now, Rainer getting some momentum, getting something on Clem's side of the map. Once again, knocking on that third base door. I mean, that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> that wasn't... Hmm. You're supposed to retreat safely into the Widow Minefield, okay? Not, 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 not safely. Still not going to be enough for uh, good old Jack Frost here. I love the Burrowed Banelings, though. Absolutely sick. Didn't even see that Burrow was on the way. I managed to also finish up plus three Carapace, which has been helpful for Rainer, as he has not yet been able to get to any attack plus three, but Clem has been on three, three for a long time. That is ZBT for you. Another base coming up for the Terran as well. This is now a six base Terran. If this top left can actually complete, Lib Range is on the way, extra command centers as well. More Widow Mines, hopefully not gonna friendly fire, but will it matter? That army was not where Clem was expecting it. He is forced to retreat. Uh, much faster than he was hoping for, not able to make a stand around that third CC. Now making more of a stand, now getting that concave, now bringing in reinforcements, and this should be enough, especially as he can once again fall back to cross your fingers. Good Widow Mines. And a planetary to boots. No upgrades on that planetary means it's a little bit sketch, and actually Rainer is going to redirect over into the natural, hoping for a little more of a vulnerable area. No planetaries and reinforcements coming out in a conga line. That is the ideal. Also trying to get that surround as well with the reinforcements. Clem, just a little too quick to allow that surround to happen. Does retreat safely to that planetary, and hopefully that planetary for Clem's sake will be enough to hold as he is under a ton of pressure. Rainer really feeling the momentum right now. Has the economy, has the army, has momentum, has the unit to take down this planetary and Clem is entirely on the retreat but retreat he does and still on five bases while well, the loss of the rich Vespian geyser can be hurtful we know that Terran's not usually too upset about that it's more about the positioning if anything and if we can replace it pretty lickety split then no problem although it's not going to be with the planetary it's going to be with an orbital so We'll still have some vulnerabilities. But Clem getting this top left base kind of at the same time, and I believe unbeknownst to Rainer, the center tower is not exactly revealing it. I mean, no, it should actually. He should start to redirect his attention over to this base, but it's already a planetary, which is still kind of a bummer. No Ling was burrowed there to block it out. No attack was sent over there while Clem was on the retreat. And so you have the planetary, the army in position, and the SCVs ready to repair. It is maybe a little bit of a bum. Missed opportunity! Vipers accidentally running straight into the Terran army. Two of them get destroyed. Only one parasitic bomb coming out to try and help out. A little bit of damage on the Liberators, but now a new problem is here. Liberators with the main push. So the Vipers are going to have multiple jobs. They always do, I suppose, but especially now having to deal with the Liberators can be obnoxious. I love that Clem is getting Caduceus Reactor pretty reliably. That will help. He's now limited medevac count. It's all over the place. It's stimming every which way. Once again, he's under pressure in his third and his natural. Third is a goner to these Cracklings, but can he save his production line? So far, so good, actually. Is Rainer not feeling confident about going up into that main base? Is just going to take what he can get. 12 SCVs, some Havoc, and maybe a couple of Burrow Bandlings. Cheeky, 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 cheeky. Cheeky, cheeky, cheeky. There we go. The Marines are gone, but the Marauders and Ghosts will live, and that is certainly the most important. Factory will go down too, and that could be influential for the future, but the Orbital will live. Some snipes go down for revenge, and Clem is holding on. Lurkers trying to take down the planetary to the top left is an excellent use of the Lurkers, because otherwise I don't think they'd really find a place in this game, but they're not actually killing the planetary. The Liberator response is excellent as well, and we got a little bit of a ring around the Rosie going down as the third base, once again under fire, is going to have to lift and try to retreat. It will be saved as the army of Clem comes to respond. Rain are not going to find the moment to strike there that he was hoping for. And while he is distracting Clem up to the top left, I would say that Rainer was also a bit distracted trying to micro those Liberators. Now going through a minefield with his Lurkers, unfortunately, to kill a base that's not even all that important. I mean, it, it definitely needs to be had very, very soon. It needs to get to mining in the next 60 seconds, but a lift on that temporarily would be worth it if it means Clem can focus entirely on the main push, and that's exactly what he's doing. Bailing's actually coming out of the ground to try and help out, and up crashing into a widow mine. That choke working really against Rainer there, as the Lings are unable to get that surround. Finally do, but perhaps too little too late. Those medevacs still healing up 
every single unit there means the Lings cannot out DPS the healing, especially as they were missing that plus three melee. And Clem will hold on. Supplies evening up in the last 30 seconds as well. Orbital going to be saved, going to get to mining. Now the Liberator Siege up there too are going to be very helpful for defending, unseaging temporarily. Maybe an opportunity for uh, Rainer, but as you can see, when they're when they're siege, what can you do about them? The Vipers are gone. The Hiders don't want to go into the range, especially under fire from the bio. And those Liberators are drawing a line in the sand on these orbitals. Plural. The third base are protected by Liberators and the sixth base as well. Also getting that rich Vespian geyser because Clem is out of gas. A lot of his original gas geysers are just defunct. So that inevitably happens any race. And speaking of, let's look at Rainer's bank. He's got 4,000 gas. Totally A-OK -okay on that one. But his minerals are looking a little bit abysmal. He's not maxed out, and he only has 600 minerals to his name. It looks like he might be running out of steam, especially as 13 drones go down. Now, he's still at 72 drones, but he just can't get them to mining. Liberator harassment is now a huge problem as the bases that Rainer can get are so far away from his defenses. Very difficult position. Clem, after all of that back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, I would say has successfully split the map as a Terran player. The Zerg really has run out of steam. They've run out of remaxes and they've run out of chances to win this game. The lurkers that we see here are actually rather desperate, to be honest. When you're building lurkers into a bio Terran that's maxed out, with bases, ghosts, and all the patients in the world. He's going to control this exactly like you see here. Those lurkers are, are inevitably goners. Liberators, snipes, just good old-fashioned concaves will take care of them. And not exactly a late, late, late game answer. And there you have it, the concave, the snipes, everything coming forward as Clem will take game number two after one of the most action-packed games we've ever seen in ZVT. And even then, it feels like it got more down to the wire than you would expect. Clem is still at a very, very healthy supply overall, but... I mean, Rainer really pushed him to the limit. <laughs> and Clem, had he lost a couple of these outward lying bases a little bit more reliably, like this one could have been denied a couple more times in a perfect world. This one could have been denied when it started to try and turn into a planetary. You can see how Clem actually would not have been able to reinforce, would not have been able to get enough units to stem the blood flow uh, as Rainer did find a couple of moments where it looked like he was this close. He was so freaking close to actually striking to the heart of his production. I mean, if Clem was 20 supply less when the Zerg army was at this natural, that production might have been swarmed. Instead, Clem holds on and has been in the lead for the last three minutes or so just continuously raising in supply while Rainer has been continually lowering in supply. Now the concave to defeat these lurkers. Getting a little bit of boxer-like, actually. Show off. But Rainer is well and truly dead. He just would be unable to tell exactly how much in a game like this. Like the 130 supply, but you still have two bases theoretically mining. Three, actually. He still has bases mining. Um when you've done so much damage to your opponent. You know, from, from Rainer's point of view, this is really hard to determine. But eventually, what's going to happen is the Terran army is going to collect itself and show that it's almost double the army supply. And then Rainer's going to go, oh, okay. <laughs> it's not as scrappy as I was hoping. Especially as Marines are damn good in the situation. Even if they do get obliterated by lurkers, if they get a concave, it's less of an obliteration, which has been happening consistently over here. And I said Rainer was going into Lurkers rather desperately, and I, I still think it's overall a true statement. It's an okay word to use. Um, but just to be super clear, it's not that he was doing something stupid. It's just that what he was going to try and do, besides get Widow Mines on his side, and this game is not over quite yet, but it kind of is, um, is that he wanted to take some really cost-efficient engagements, and Lurkers are your best bet to being cost-efficient for Zerg. Ling lings will, you know, trade out inefficiently most of the time. Banelings, literally suicidal. Hydras, if they're alone, not very good. And uh, so lurkers could have been the perfect solution. They just never really got that ideal cost-efficient trade that he was hoping for. And we do finally have the tap out. Rainer, even at the very end, you like Clem having to back away was really awfully surprising considering he was double the army supply, but it must have been somewhere else. <laughs> so Rainer really in it to win it till the very end. 
cannot do so and will lose the second game. But in a best of five, that just means that things are tied up. On the top left of Sight Delta, we have Team Liquid's Clem. And on the bottom right, it is Basilisk's Rainer, who is using the name Jack Frost. And if you ever hear me pause before saying Rainer, it's because I almost said Jack Frost. Should be illegal. Straight to jail. Uh, but seriously, what a fantastic game number two. Game number one was awesome as well. Both games living up to the, the hype and potential of a TVZ. But that last game, I, th I really think that desperate is still the appropriate word. Because when you see a, a Zerg player try and play as cost-efficiently as possible, that is the point in which they are, you know, they're not playing, I suppose. Typical epitome Zerg, I guess. Like, you know, what we consider to be the best situation possible for a Zerg player, which is that they're way ahead in the economy. Huge bank, constantly reinforcing, constantly trading. That's, that is Zerg. And it's really cool, but that's what it is. So as soon as they go, oh shit, I need to start taking resource efficient trades, they kind of have an option in Lurkers. They kind of do. It just really is a kind of situation because Lurkers have kind of been figured out. Um, you know, if they appear kind of more in the mid game before Ghosts are there, alongside some momentum, uh, before I think Terran's also got like, better against them as well, then they were a dagger to the heart. They were fantastic. They were, they were really good. But then if they're kind of later in the game, they're going into ghosts, we know that doesn't look too pretty. If they're being used defensively to try and buy that time, to try and buy those trades, that is usually because a Zerg player has identified they're in some trouble and they do something different. And sometimes doing something different is exactly what is necessary to win. There is a chance that Raynor builds the five lurkers he was building underneath the pressure and then he saves them then builds five more then builds like three more and then he has 13 lurkers and you know even with ghost in a concave if the 13 lurkers get into a prime position some type of choke i mean that that takes a lot to dismantle it was it was too late unfortunately too late uh we do have a different build here so two racks forward position for clem he has practiced this extensively, but he hasn't made it his bread and butter like Yun has. So he, he went through a phase where he was doing it every single game. Practice. Now he just throws it in occasionally, apparently on site Delta here. Third hatch, once again, that really important thing to note. Do you sneak the drone out? Yes, okay. Probably all right for the next three minutes. You have to be a little scared of it being a three racks, though, to be honest, especially because Raynor has had really reserved overlords. His overlords have never dipped so far in to confirm a one racks expand. They have not positioned themselves around to get a cheeky in base scout, so it's possible. <laughs> Clem could have tried to actually cheese him. He's done it before. Uh, but not the case, not the case. The overlords are safe. The third hatchery should be safe against three Reapers. If it was a three racks, the hatchery's dead. Rainer's in a lot of trouble. If it was four or five reapers off of a two racks, this space is 100% dead. But usually if it's only three reapers off of a two racks, this third hatch is supposed to live. So this is, uh, problematic. Actually, he loses the drone too. And he had, you know, I should have paid more attention to the Zerg opener actually. Because he, he just seemed to have identified pretty early on he could not save that. You know, he didn't try to send the queens out. He didn't try to make slow lings. I mean, the speed, definitely not fast, right? Speed is finished in a lot of games at this point. So I guess that's just what he identified. Wasn't anticipating the two racks, the consistent pressure on his third as the focus too. Sometimes they use the three reapers to jump around the main and the natural and try and get drones. And as such, has to give up the third base. But better to at least uh, try and decide things wisely than to panic. So still a sucky situation, even as he killed two of the three of the Reapers. Follow-up for Clem was a 3cc. So he kills his opponent's third while finishing his third. That's not a great sign. <laughs> and even though Raynor was droning through the entire problem, because couldn't make lings, they are too slow, you know, you're still not really getting the best situation as a Zerg player. I think at some point, like around this point, actually, you are starting to maybe hit some larva problems. No, actually, nope, 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 nope. I was just guessing, honestly. Complete guess on that part. 
No, third hatch might still be totally well-timed for that. But I would say now the problem is perhaps a lack of creep spread. The third hatch would have propelled forward. So now the Hellion Reaper Cyclone Squad is trying its best to be obnoxious, but a nice little Ling Surround could really help Rainer. And he is going to get around on the Cyclone. Yep, one's gone. Second one will fall and the Hellion's not really even worth chasing after, to be honest. Nicely defended, but then perhaps a little overzealous from Clem as well. Maybe saw all those queens that would have had to have gone off of creep to defend the third, and his eyes got really big, and he was like, Oh god, oh god, I can kill all these queens, I can kill all these queens. But lings were made, so good surround. And speaking of another good surround, hey! Rainer really on top of things. It's actually somewhat reminiscent of a similar site Delta game. Not in build orders, but in situations. Dark fell felt really far behind. Fell really far behind versus Cure. As Cure's opener was insanely greedy. And then Dark basically did everything post that moment as good as possible and ended up winning that game. Kind of feels like this. Rainer might have had to sacrifice the third hatch for the greater good. But he has denied Clem's follow-up aggression. Which I think is really important considering how often we see Clem's follow-up aggression should have killed the guy. Third CC down, obviously, for Clem. Rainer's gonna get that scout there. Creep spread now finally on its way outside, pushing through this little choke on the third base. That's what's most important. A couple less Hellions, though, for this push, which he very intently... Oh, only one less Hellion. Okay, well. One less Hellion for this push, which he very intently got the armory for. But three Hellbats still adding in a little bit of difficulty for the Lings. Queens will be the main defense here, and they are defending so far. So they got a couple of transfuses. Nice focus fire on the medevac too. Only three drones going down. And while the Lings also went down pretty freaking easily, they didn't do very much. There also weren't very many of them. So again, Rainer maybe getting some more droning behind this too as well. Eh, not so much. Just recognize the need for Lings to chase down the Marines as they just pivoted their way over to this fifth base and got the kill, not a cancel. Very unfortunate there. And now that we are really looking at the, the drone count, I think it's been, it's still ultimately been in, droning when you don't, well, not droning when you don't want to, but it's still been building army in an unideal situation. Trying to push out these drones at appropriate time so you don't die. <laughs> it's, you know, there's always the trouble, but then, especially problematic when you have an unideal start. And I think we are seeing still the ripple effects of that, despite the follow-up aggression not really finding a lot of success. Rainer almost never being very far ahead in workers is not a good sign for Zerg. Once again, a defense with the Queens helping the majority of that. Into the main base we go, though, and Rainer is still going to have some trouble. He is down army supply, now down in workers as well, and more could be falling. Spire play is interesting in this type of game. I think Spire play in general we know is just less common than it was, but then as far as to when they use the Spire, you know, Radisset, pretty popular. It's a big map, and hopefully you don't take any damage in the early game. In a game when you are on the back foot, Oof, that's, um, it's gambly, it feels like. It basically is gambling yeah. <laughs> that Clem will be so gung-ho with these drops, which, I mean, he really is being quite annoying, <laughs> that the mutas will eventually pop and be able to kill one or two. But Clem was actually so gung-ho with the drops that it just wins the game instead. And yeah, I think that's just 100% has to do with the opener. Even though Rainer stopped the follow-up aggression, the fact that his third base was late and then his droning was late and that Clem got a 3cc behind the two racks to basically match the worker count, plus two and then three mules at a time. That's not where a Zerg player has the most fun. The only thing that would have stopped Clem from dominating that game was if Rainer actually got a full surround on the Marines. You know, like Clem straight up messed up. So, yeah, the least interesting of the game so far. Uh, that's exactly what Clem would hope for when he opens up the way that he did. In the bottom right of Golden Aura, we now have Team Liquid's Clem. And on the top left, it is Basilisk's Rainer. So yeah, Rainer just uh, didn't anticipate the two racks opener, played pretty greedy on the gas and speed timing, and then just was forced to give up on the third. I don't think you always have to give up on the third if your speed is that late. But I think two things played a factor. One, 
when a Terran decides to literally just go after the hatchery. That's already something that can drastically change your chances of keeping it alive. So like I said, if Clem had instead used the first reaper to harass the main, then the second reaper to harass the natural, and then only with the third reaper after trying to get back into the main base does he then go after the third? That third finishes, that third spreads creep, the queens are allowed to transfuse, and it's not so problematic, although he might have lost more drones, to be fair. And he still would have trouble defending the two racks totally and entirely with the opener that he chose, but, uh... I'm gonna lose an entire third, and it really just is offsetting. And I had belief that it, you know, could look like that Dark game, in which Dark just handled the follow-up Hellions, handled the follow-up Hellion Cyclone, handled the follow-up push to the best of his ability, despite an unideal start, and then he actually ended up winning the game versus Cure in the semifinals of Atlanta. Bit new. No, 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 no. Clem able to deliver the killing blows Hippity hopping in all across the bases. To a point that not only was Rainer down 50 supplies, so of course you would tap out, but I gotta imagine you also just want to cut your, your losses, because that was gonna get frustrating if it wasn't already. So we have a very different opener from Rainer, by the way, if you didn't catch that. That 14 pool, I believe. Or is it 15, 14? Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely a 14 pool. Uh, and then the gas. Uh, everything earlier on, basically, right? I mean, the queen's gonna be popping out, and hopefully, you don't have to make any lings to actually defend here. It's not a forward two racks. It is a one racks expand with a reaper. I was actually wondering if he skipped it for once. He did not. But also an SCV scout. So, with this, Clem can tell the more appropriately the timing of the hatchery, where if you come in with a reaper only, you see that it's done. You see the, the drone's mining can be a little more obscured as to what the actual opener was. And then it could have gone into the main, too. The SV could have gone into the main and still escape with its life to see if the pool was fast, too. But I think Clem knows what is up. Third CC is on the way again, because unless it's a real cheese, unless it's a roach warren on the way or something. There's no reason not to. But Clem definitely got the benefit of the surprise two racks in the last game, kind of slipping it in there. Not exactly a cheese, but certainly finding Rainer off guard and then almost getting a free win off of it, really. It was one of the, uh, the easier wins you're going to have against Rainer. Two Cyclone openers. So Clem is adding all these little different openers that I was talking about into this best of five, which I love. Just again, really highlighting that he is a well-rounded overall Terran player. I think three years ago, yeah, something like that. Three years ago, he would literally only do three CC. Maybe a really bad Hellbat push, actually. But thank God we don't have those anymore. Um, but now we have the four two racks. We have the Cyclone opener as well. And then the rest of the games, yeah, three CC first and foremost. But the Cyclones literally coming out first and foremost would be vulnerable against someone who had speedlings. But yet again, Rainer delaying speed by quite a bit won't be done until, what, 440, something like that. And so the Cyclones will get to bully any slow lings and, of course, most importantly, the Queens. Overlords will be a nice freebie, but it's very conservatively placed Overlords once again. So no, no freebies there. And with so many lings being produced and no concrete knowledge of the timing of speed, you might want to be a little bit careful here as Clem. These cyclones don't deal well with large amount of speed lings. And speed is about to finish. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm actually really surprised Clem is this aggressive. This seems like a huge mistake. With my god vision, I can confidently say that was a mistake. Uh, no, seriously, though, I'm actually really surprised. Clem maybe hoping that he was trying to be greedy, not just on the speed timing, but also on the amount of links produced. Only had Cyclones on the Zerg side of the map. A very risky play that was appropriately punished. I mean, Rainer should feel like that was a given. Him taking down those four Cyclones. So an ultimately bad opener from Clem. 
He's still gonna get his third CC. He's still gonna have the Hellions to ensure that his third CC can be gotten. But you know, there's, there's a waste of Cyclones, really. Because what did they end up getting? Oh my god, five links. Five. <laughs> Almost as many Cyclones out as links. That's not a good thing. All right, well, Marainer looking to tie up the series with a strong early game. And Clem, perhaps just a little overconfident, able to display his micro to the fullest of its capabilities in the last game, and is thinking, I'll do it again, I'll do it again. Eh, eh. Not so much. Rainer's now got the Ling run-by set up for whenever he sees an actual push on the way. Plenty of queens back at home. These Hellions are nothing. They're just scouts. And then uh, no alternative form of harassment. Starport was late and, uh, well, late, or I should say, it wasn't used for a Liberator or Banshees, just moving on right over to the Medivacs, which they're about to pop, but this Ling run-by was effective. I would say. Three SCVs isn't actually all that much, but three SCVs plus a little bit of a delay. And now Rainer can continue throwing Lings across the field. Maybe a little overzealous, but if he situates them for another run-by, there's no point in which Clem feels comfortable moving out on the map. Uh, that's the game to be played here. Can Rainer actually afford to send the Lings over for a run by while still holding back at home with the Baneling that's not quite yet done? That is a little sus. Only Ling Queen defense and half your Lings being used to harass. That is the gamble here. Will it be worthwhile? Queens do hold on for a very long time, and they're still okay against combat shieldless marines. Only two medivac healing. A couple of widow mines though, gonna help out, and that is a great two of them popping off on the queens, but. Fortunately, the Ling production was just in the nick of time. The Ling run by had come back to help in case it was needed. And enough queens are still alive to help out with the creep spread injects, as well as dealing with some of the anti-air. Nicely placed four crawlers too. Love it. And so Clem will not be able to beep up top, bottom, top, bottom. And Aspire is once again the play. Now, this is obviously not as poor of a game as the last one. But it is still, I would say, very dangerous. Because ultimately... No matter how you opened, unless the game is, is clearly in a, kind of like a very passive state, getting to mutas, saving that money, investing that money into mutas until they're at a really high count, like 14 or something, I mean, it's just a scary way to play. <laughs> it's just, it's a very high skill way of playing. So if you can use it the best, you can defend with the ground forces until you get enough mutas, and then your control of the mutas is spectacular, and your reads on the game are spectacular, and you kill 17 SCVs with a band that run by. Okay, yeah, the mutas are great. Particularly when you kill 17 SCVs. Totally missed that. So did Clem. Clearly did not pull the SCVs away. He was so focused on the micro. Mutas... Not even necessary right there, but he is saving up for mutas. A thousand minerals, 800 gas, mutas could pop at any second, and Clem is not finding any headway truly onto the bases. Now, he did kill quite a few queens. They're having to be replaced right now, but the actual economy has not been touched. And we could, at any point in time, have... Oh, you know what? The economy wasn't touched, but the larva was. Oh! I was gonna say, at any point, we could have more units, but no, we cannot. Larva, a huge issue. 11 SCVs going down once again as Clam pushes forward here. Now with Rainer's Larva problem, this could be game ending, but Clam not microing fast enough was deep onto creep when that partial surround went down. And he's still losing some SCVs back at home, still forced to keep his reinforcements back at home, and Rainer will live to fight another day. He'll save his fifth hatchery, which right now the most important thing is that it's Larva. But it'll also get back to mining on it, too. And finally, Larva pops so they can make 13 mutas all at once. 13 mutas, 16 mutas, plus one as well. We got 2-2 two, two on the ground finishing for the Zerg. That's going to be nice. Plus two is the only upgrade started for Clem. Clem is making quite a few mistakes, actually. No armor. And much later to the upgrades in general, the builds, I guess. But still, this... Uh it's a good size Terran force, but I'm not sure he was anticipating that many mutas right off the bat. He is charging forward, hoping to find a weak point of the Bailings, but he will not. The Bailings finish in the nick of time, forcing the entire army to retreat. So retreat safely over this little rock here, back to the reinforcements. But Rainer successfully holding on with his Ling Bailing, getting to 15 mutas, can start sniping down some retreating medivacs. He'll deter any form of drops. He can also start to focus fire down widow mines, give it an opportunity. These mutas, again, when they're controlled correctly, are really awesome. Very classic TVZ, what we all have fond memories of. It's just a really difficult thing to get there. 
and to still use them to the like, game ending effects. Terrans have gotten much better against them in general as well. But Clem has lost a lot of SEVs in this game. I mean, he lost so many. 32. 32. He would easily have gotten to a fourth base at this point. Because he's not really a three base all inner. So I believe that would have been his plan. But forced to three base all in. Because of all that SEV damage. Now dealing with Mutas harassing his third CC. Which he has to entirely evacuate. He's all in. And so far, so good on Rainer's defense. One Liberator is obnoxious. The Wood of Mine's refiring is annoying. But Rainer actually has some time here. He knows that he's got Clem on the ropes. When the Mutas are freewheeling like this, you know that's a bad sign for the Terran. Finally, just enough defenses to hold on to the main base, but that orbital's still under fire. It's on fire. Now the Mutas do need to maybe run away from the Thor. Yep. Yeah, a little, little late to the runaway. But 13 Mutas still in play. Four more on the way. Lots of momentum on the Zerg side. As the mines pop off again. As Clem was forced to entirely retreat, so Rainer can get his queens up and get his injects going, get his creep tumor going, he can get his banelings reformed, he can use his mutas effectively as opposed to only defensively, in which that's not really their goal. Clem is going to try and get back on the front as fast as possible, and he will do so before this gigantic ling run by comes into effect. Thor brought to the front lines, hoping to soak up some Banelings and certainly deal with the Mutas. The Ling Banelings still alive, still going for the connections. The Wood of Mine's not getting huge ones anyway. And a lot of bio is missing from this fight. <laughs> it's a lot of medivacs more than it's a lot of bio. Not a whole lot of Wood of Mine's left over either. In fact, only one. 11 more SCVs go down to the run by 30. He completely lifted. This was entirely all in from Clem, and it has not worked. Rainer. We'll hold on to the series and bring us to a game five. And to the bottom left for a game number five, it is Team Liquid's Clem. Look at these players, little zoom. They deserve it. In the top right, as the Red Zerg, it is Basilisk's Rainer. I gotta tell you, the fact that he was going from Mutas and was larva blocked. Thought was really going to kill him. In fact, I'm going to say confidently that kills many, many Zerg. But Clem, having taken 34 SEVs of damage, really both colossal sets of damage too, right? 17 and 17. Really saved Rainer's life. And Rainer was the one who caused that damage. So, you know, but yeah, otherwise... If Clem was focusing entirely on the offensive, building his fourth base, landing his fourth base, able to produce as much as he could, because he would probably miss, like, he, he didn't have a second factory, probably. Did he have drilling claws? I'm not sure. Uh, he messed up his upgrades, and I would say that's a, maybe a distraction was in play there. Um, if that all doesn't exist, then Clem wins that, I think, no problem. And, and it's far more about Rainer's mistakes than Clem's, but... In the grand scheme of things, Rainer did make a mistake, or a forced error, I suppose. Lost his queens, couldn't inject, right? So he was forced to make an error, and then he did everything in his power to make sure that error did not kill him. Which uh, is one of the reasons he's definitely one of the clutchest players in the scene. And for a while, he was certainly known as the comeback kid. He made a lot of really good decisions and a lot of problematic scenarios. And now we have Clem going back to what was his easiest game so far, which was when he opened with the two racks. So four two racks, it is going to be scouted by the Overlord again. Ranger doesn't know exactly that it's not a three racks. But Clem, if you're going to guess, more likely not to. And this Overlord could get into position as he the command center. And it looks like it's uh, kind of going to do that. Not even in any hurry, though. So he's just... Predicting it's a T-Rex. Now this is problematic. No third hatchery? Something that the Zerg... Uh... I guess we, if there's no third hatchery to kill, then you can't, you can't kill it, right? <laughs> that was the problem in the last time. Uh, again, usually you see that drone sneak on out, build the third, and then ideally you either have speedlings on time or the queens walk out. But Rainer very intentionally not doing it so that his third isn't a vulnerable area. Making sure to get the Overlord to compensate and all that good stuff. Clem 
He's like, oh, well, I can't kill a third hatch. Oh, well. It's not... It's not the worst thing for him, you know? He still delayed the third hatch. He still forces Herb Clear to do a different build. And if they decide to do a build that gets aggressive, for instance, we do see a Roachworn, Clem's all the Roachworn, you still feel okay as a T-Rex. So the T-Rex, there's a reason that it's been in the meta and that it's Yon's bread and butter. And that is because it's good at almost everything. It's lack of, you know, economy compared to a one Rex expand three CC is sometimes very worth the amount of harassment, damage, scouting you get, and then it can still defend against early pressure. Nice snipe on that creep tumor. This Roach Warren, it was very evident. This was no attempt to hide it. I don't think this is going to be an attempt to all in with it. Although, actually, that's the one thing he hasn't tried yet. Game number five, everything on the line. Those are lings being produced, not more drones. These are not just a casual couple of roaches to scare the player away. But these all ins, I don't know if they're really good anymore, honestly. Well, <laughs> I think there's a lot of debate. There has been a lot of debate about whether Zerg all ins are good in general. And while any surprise can be a good surprise, if they're not a surprise, that's when they kind of suck. And you know, that's sometimes you can see what a Protoss or Terran player is doing and still have trouble defending against it. I mean, Clem is only now figuring out that it is going to be a Ling Roach all in. Was probably more so anticipating the Roaches just to be a little bit of a, you know, boo. But without a Banshee, you're not going to have the easiest time to defend. And the Cyclones are vulnerable against the Ling Surround. If this was pure Roach, the Cyclones are just having a heyday right now. But the Lings do add in that little bit extra. What's great against Lings? A wall. And while the wall will be broken by the Ravagers eventually, you still have this choke to work with. A bunker being made, I think, is an excellent addition. Two racks producing Marines is very, very helpful. The Cyclones actually do get partially surrounded, though, kind of maybe making more of a wall. And that choke is still working wonders. Wall or no? I think Raynor doesn't quite have enough, but he's going to deny Stim at the very least. Another Cyclone bites the dust. And the Ravagers will live. Another reactor going to go down, but these are all of the... <laughs> these are not the biggest things. These are just clearly just things that Rainer thinks he can get while he drones at home, usually, I would say. The Terran player is like, oh, you're not really trying anymore. But there are more lings being produced, more roaches being produced. Rainer is doubling down on the attack. And Clem might be predicting incorrectly. This is exactly why you would double down on the attack. But this Cyclone drop is really important. Not only can it chase after some of these weakened Ravagers, but it's also going to be able to get the scout. So seeing even two more Lings reinforced is already kind of suspicious. And now seeing the rest of the army, well, clearly he knows what's going down. So very easily could have made the mistake of thinking he's droning. He's not serious anymore. And he has not. First bunker still up and running. Second bunker on the way. Medivac with Cyclones ready to micro. Stim will not be in play in this game, apparently. But I would say that Sim isn't strictly necessary. It would be helpful. It would be extremely helpful. And perhaps a third Rax will be made eventually. But don't forget, this is very much all in from Rainer. He has not droned up. Clem is on three bases, and it's all down to this for game number five. Bunker going to be targeted by the Crows of Bile. Not actually able to defeat it in one go, though, and that is devastating. The Bunker will survive. The second Bunker is still up as well. Dodging away from the Crows of Bile otherwise, and the Ling is never got a chance to get us around. They are all massacred from the wall of units that was available to Clem. 17 SCVs did go down in the hold, but it is well worth the overall hold. Clem still ahead by five workers. Rainer running out of steam. A tank pops as well to really solidify the defense. And of course, of course he's going to use it's a micro. Because that's what he does. If he doesn't have any cyclones, he'll use the freaking tank. And Rainer, I mean, is he going to try and drone? No, still not. Going to go for the triple down. Hit him again, right? The third all in. No one ever expects it. Clem is going to still be missing Stim and Combat Shields. He is back down to only one bunker, but he still has the wall on his side. He has even more units. He still has Medivacs. He's got the tank popping out. The Rainer is clearly just desperate. This all in is a ballsy plan, which I think we all really appreciate. The high stakes action of game number five, but it has not worked out. One tank will fall to the Cross of Bile. The Marines and a Cyclone still alive. Production still mostly intact. Bunker still alive. Second tank firing away. And that is indeed it. Clem will take the 3 2 victory for the NA Open Cup.
And that was overall a very fun series. But game one and two is absolutely fantastic. GG's. G freaking G's. The next day, Rainer was up against an Archon team practicing his uh, ZVT. So he's taking, he's taking this loss seriously. Uh, but all the players are taking the prep for Katowice seriously, which is the next big event in just about a month. So we'll see both those, uh, these players there. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed it. And, uh, for the